you know, I've got this, uh, my little design of money here. This is, uh, most of the, the money here is from currency that I, I received uh, one time or another when I was traveling. In some cases, it was money that uh, my wife had when she was traveling or other people that uh, know that I kind of collect paper currency. So they've given me some here and there. And uh, I'm going to take some out because I'm going to rearrange this little thing here. Let me share with you some of uh, the stories behind these. Oops. Here's Saddam Hussein on a, on a bill. I don't think that's valid legal tender anymore. <clears throat> uh, the Dominican Republic was a, not counting Canada, the first uh, country I went to. I remember the first time I went there, the uh, three pesos for one dollar. Next year it was four and a half pesos for a dollar. The next uh, a couple years later I went back, it was six to one, the ratio. Now, <clears throat> let's see what else we have here. Here's a Brazilian Crucero. Unfortunately, they don't use the Cruceros. They're a thousand Cruceros. But they don't use the Crucero anymore. They now use their Reale. Uh, here my, my wife brought this back from her trip to uh, Argentina back in 1991. She has a hundred thousand Australs. Now they've been using the peso for a number of years. So a lot of these countries just as a way of handling it, they just change their, their because it's been so hyperinflated, they end up changing their currency completely. Here's, uh, speaking of hyperinflation, we have some Deutschmarks from the 1920s, the Weimar Republic. If you remember anything about history back that after World War I, the uh, Germans owed so much in reparations that they ended up just printing money to uh, inflate their currency, which destroyed all that, the uh, people's wealth and uh, led to the rise of Hitler. Now there are coins that will end up uh, keeping their store of value at times, if, in particular if they're made of silver. Uh, here's a Greek coin supposedly from 2,000 years ago. I bought this uh, somewhere in Greece. And um, <clears throat> here's another coin from the Emperor Justinian's time in the 500s. These have the same value. If this is pure silver, I can melt it down and use it as silver. So it still has value even though it's no longer uh, a current, the, uh, it wasn't issued by a country that, that currently exists. This one here I bought, uh, but I can tell it's fake. And uh, I bought this one because I wanted to be able to see the difference. The coins that are a thousand or two thousand years old, they're very smooth because they've been handled so much as opposed to something that was newly minted um, and made to look like an old coin. So, what really causes inflation? Good question. Glad you asked it. Um, there are a couple different types of inflation. The first one we're going to talk about is demand pull inflation. Okay. I love to see lineups in New York City, not police lineups. But actually, what I want a camera person to do is to come look over this way here. You see the, the street vendor with the line of people behind me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't have to zoom in on them. Okay. You did bad lighting on that. Okay. Whenever. Whenever you see a line of people, your first thought should be, hey, why don't they charge more? And that's what we would call demand pull inflation, when prices go up because there's a huge demand for it. And there's a reason why they typically don't just automatically charge more here in New York City, and that's because on the next corner there's another vendor just like them. So competition drives down the possibility of demand pull inflation. Demand pull inflation is going to happen when there's not enough suppliers and there's too much demand for them as opposed to cost push inflation, which is what happens when the price of the goods that the supplier is, is using to make their goods, if those costs go up, then they pass those costs on to consumers. So cost push, push inflation is very different from demand pull inflation. And in New York City here, I've been wandering all day just to find a street vendor with a lineup, and it's taken me a long time. Why? Because there's a lot of street vendors, there's a lot of competition. So there's no chance for that street vendor to just increase their prices. You can't just say, I'm greedy and I want more. It doesn't work like that. But the real way that inflation happens in general, I have a little video that I, I created a few years ago to help explain it, and you have to pay attention to my, I, I use my three kids as props. My daughter on the left 
something very special happens to her to create inflation. And that's what you need to pay attention to. So enjoy. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Green ditch. Thirty-six hundred dollars. I only have one thousand by one one thousand six hundred. It's not enough. Now, now it looks as though we're just here playing Monopoly. Actually, it's Campopoly. It's a yeah. it's a board. <laughs> we made it ourselves. These, these are my children. Please try to ignore them. Uh, the lecture today is about inflation, and uh, in Campopoly here is the uh, is a Monopoly game, but just for the neighborhood here around our camp. And we've got all the, the various uh, people's houses uh, listed in various prices. But what I'm lecturing about today is inflation, because uh, the best way to illustrate inflation, inflation is. Uh, a general rise in prices, but it's caused by a, a sudden increase in the money supply. That's what causes inflation. So let's get back to our game and see how inflation uh, affects the real world. Okay, actually, you know what? I think I will buy it. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 500, 3,600. Okay. Okay. I'm now. I'm winning. Uh-huh. Really? Hello. <laughs> hey, Rebecca. Thousand. Can I buy um the K and J Koza option? Oh, How much? Well, what did it cost you? Well, it cost me two thousand six hundred, so it has to be more than that. <laughs> no doubt. I will give you four thousand. Sure. <laughs> Hey, Emily, can I have the Stevensons? That cost me a thousand. I'll give you two thousand. Okay. So what we see with inflation and the increase in the money supply is a general rise in prices. And I've only got four hundred dollars, so I better not roll to see uh, where I land, because it could be... Uh... It's your turn now, because we're going like this. Oh. Can I 